There are six types of civil engineers, six main types of them. Do you know what they are? Do you know where they work at? Do you know what their roles and responsibilities are? Well, in this video, we're going to cover the six main types of civil engineers. There's actually six types of civil engineers. The first type of civil engineer is what we call a water resources or environmental engineer. The water resources and environmental engineers are people who work on water uh, purification, sanitation sewer uh, purification, and other types of uh, liquid uh, and air quality. So those are the three areas, water, sewer, and air. These are the environmental uh, engineers. What they are responsible for is actually designing what goes into the uh, design in order to peer for that water to meet the federal codes. You can imagine your local sanitation plant in your home community. Imagine they have uh, clarifiers, ponds, they have uh, ion treatment perhaps. They have different types of treatment in the sewage that when it comes out the other side of the plant, the water meets the federal standards. The same thing when they're drawing water, either from the ground or from lakes or streams, they goes through a purification process, very similar to us when they are treating sanitation water. Air purification is slightly different. Here they'll have scrubbers in the uh, towers or they may have um, uh, sprayers of some sort that sprays down the heavier particles and causes them to go to the bottom. They may have filter systems in the uh, air that as it travels through the plant, clean the air enough to meet the federal standards. The second type of <laughs> civil engineer is what we call the geotechnical engineer. Geo meaning earth, technical, technical of course. So what these are, what these individuals are, are the soils engineers. They are mainly concerned with the ground underneath the structure. They are looking at how it will hold the load. Now this could be for roads, buildings, bridges, what have you, that are sitting on the ground and making sure the ground can support that structure. So that's a geotechnical engineer. The third major type of a civil engineer is a structural engineer. As the first word uh, suggests, they are concerned with the structure of the uh, project. Let's say it's a building. They want to make sure that all the components that holds the building up will actually do so. They will get involved with the calculations, making sure it has the stresses, that it can handle the stresses. They'll look at wind loads, live loads, dead loads, those various um, uh, components of the structure to make sure it can support the weights and the various forces pushing against that building, bridge, or what have you. The fourth major type of a civil engineer is what we call a transportation engineer. Transportation engineers are, first, they are concerned with the capacity of a road. How many vehicles can move down that road at the design speed? They look at what we call the level of service. When they come up to intersections, how long people are waiting before they can pass through the intersection, either through stop signs, traffic signals, or, or what have you. What is the capacity of that street? The second thing they also work on is the actual design of roads, uh, bridges. They, they look at the width of lanes, the design speeds, curvature, super elevations of roads as they go around the curves. They look at uh, interstates, highways, and sometimes roads. They're also looking at what goes underneath the road, such as utility lines, storm drains, power lines, whatever may be flowing underneath the road or under the bridges. That is a transportation engineer, a part of civil engineering. The fifth type of civil engineer is a construction engineer. They, work, they actually work on the job site. Their responsibility is mostly in the scheduling, making sure everything is coming onto the site on the time when they need it to build the project. A lot of construction engineers are also in the problem solving. As different issues arises with the construction, they can come in and provide solutions so that they can keep on going with the construction 
of a building, a bridge, a road, or what have you. That's a construction engineer. Before we move on to the final type of uh, civil engineer, I know you've been getting value out of this video, so please go down below right there and subscribe to our channel. Also, go over to the side over there and make sure you hit that bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. And as always, hit that like button because that tells us that we're doing a good job in providing videos that you want to see on our channel. Now that final and most important of all of the branches of civil engineering in the field is what we call a land development design engineer. This guy, our woman, he actually has to take from all the other five major categories in order to do what he does in the land development design. He has to know about geotechnical engineering. He's going to take into account the soils, what the structure is being built on, the type of project that's being built. He needs to know that the soil can support that. He's got to be able to read a soils report and understand the soils report. He's also going to be into the transportation engineering. He's going to be designing roads or he's adding onto the existing roads along the perimeters or he's bringing in interior roads into the site. He may even be involved with some bridge work that's going to be going through the project if it's large enough. So he takes transportation engineering. He's also involved in the construction engineering. Once the land development engineer designs a project and it's out and being built, he's the one receiving what we call the RFIs, Request for Information. He has to be able to have enough knowledge about construction that he can answer the questions so the people in the field can go ahead and uh, resolve the issue based upon his engineering opinion. Also, they need to know about structural engineering. A lot of what goes into the land development, such as if we're putting in a junction box in a storm sewer system, involves structural engineering. They got to be able to understand about the rebar that goes into the concrete, the spacing, what it means by being on centered, how to properly draw that, how to actually um, uh, annotate what that drawing means structurally, be able to explain concrete and how it's poured. That's a structural engineering component. They also have to have a good understanding of water resources and environmental engineering because in most land development projects, you're going to bring in water, you're going to bring in sewer, you're also probably going to bring in storm drain systems into the project, and all of this requires a good knowledge of how to design pipelines. So, so the land development engineer is also going to know about EPA Net, which is a a uh, piece of software that's free that you can download. And it it is what we use in order to design water network analysis. He also has to be able to understand drainage studies. He has to be able to write drainage studies because flood control for storm drains. He also has to be able to understand traffic reports because, well, he's probably going to write a traffic impact analysis. And that's part of transportation. So that is the probably the most rounded of all six types of uh, civil engineers is the land development design engineer. So as we said, I know you've gotten value out of this video. Please subscribe to our channel. And also you'll notice over to the side here, there are more videos that we recommend that you watch on project engineering and project management. So until the next time, keep on growing your engineering knowledge and expanding that engineering management experience and skills. We'll see you on the next video.